what's been a wild fantasy is now reality. You can use React server components with React Native. With Expo SDK 52, you have the first RSC beta and the new Use Server Directive. On the same note, we now also have Use Client. And to migrate web content easily to React Native, we already have the DOM components with Use DOM. If all of that sounds too abstract to you and you're not sure what all the hype is about, let's go through a practical demo of what's possible with React Native today. And if you're just getting started with React Native or want direct access to me, you should also definitely check out galaxies.dev. Galaxies is the only online school 100% focused on React Native and personal support. So you will be able to build and ship epic React Native apps in no time. But now let's talk about universal React server components. All right, so let's take a practical look at this. Here's an example in the expo documentation that you can follow. There are a few things that we need to do. So first of all, we need to make sure that uh, expo router is our entry. That should be the case in our default app. Then we need to heat over to our app JSON and add a little flag in there. So let's do this down here where we got the experiments. I gotta set this here. And additionally, I also found that under web export, I had to change this from static to single. On top of that, I also had to install a specific version. Um, let's see of this package. So I had to install as a development dependency React server DOM Webpack at a super early version 19. So that was required in my case as well. Again, all of this might change in the future. Um, with that in place, we should be able to simply run npx expo to bring up expo go because this stuff will actually work with expo go. Uh, I can just press I here for my iOS simulator and bring it up to the side. Now I prepared just a tiny bit of code for this example. So we do have a little layout file. I mean, do you give more space? There's nothing special besides some styling. We do have an index page, which has a link to a functions page. On the functions page, there's a button, but all of this is empty. And we're gonna fill all of this with live. We will eventually also have an ID page where we can get the ID. So I wanna probably display a details page and I wanna show you three different examples of how we could use integrate RSC and DOM component. Let's start with an RSC. I wanna do this in a new folder here. I wanna call this server I don't know there are no best practices yet around this so I will just made this up so I have a client component here which is like a film item that renders a link and some information and we might be able to actually use this in our server component I'll bring in my predefined server component that could eventually look like this here I'm exporting a function this is important and we're going to talk about this again in a second and then we make a simple fetch request, we get some JSON data and we return things. And we also actually use my film item, which is a client component basically. But this right here is a server component. We got use server up here. And if you wanna make sure that your code definitely only runs on the server, you can import the server only package. This itself isn't too special. Let's see how we can put this into our application. So back in my index, I can now use this. Now, I can't use it like this. If you go ahead and try to use it somehow like this, it's not going to work. Um, you're gonna see a lot of issues right here. One problem is that we still need uh, React Suspense. Another problem is that we need to call it uh, with a constructor because this is like using a React Server component as a component uh, in what we just did isn't possible yet. They're still figuring the, how, to, how to do this. But what you can do is you can actually use Suspense here. So can we bring in Suspense from React? And we wanna say, okay, for the fallback, I'm gonna use, so let's add this. For the fallback, I'm gonna use an activity indicator. And then in here, I will also place a little text. And then we have my Star Wars line. This will throw up an error again. But don't worry, what you can do is you can bring in reference types react canary and then everything turns better. Now, this was killed in the background for a reason because it was like completely out of control. Um, oh, that's also still out of control. We looks like we got a good day here. <laughs> um, okay, so we got another problem and it's good that these things happen because I really wanna show you that this is bleeding edge. Cannot access style sheet on the server. Why do we 
actually access stylesheet on the server? Well, if you check out our component, you're gonna see we use the film item. So we definitely can't have stylesheet in here. I already learned that. But my film item is actually using stylesheet. And unless we specify it, it's going to be a server component. Now comes the next directive. We're gonna say use client. So we mark this as an actual client component. Now, if we go ahead with npx expo now, um, I hope that we finally are able to step out of this infinite loop, reload this page and voila, we have it. This is React Server Component in React Native in action. We're using it here with Suspense. So you've probably seen, I can also refresh the little loading indicator. And then we got the line, which is the text we defined here. And down here, this list, is basically coming from our React Server component here, but it's also containing film items which are marked as use client. So that means in these use client items here, I could actually use native functionality, which I couldn't do here in my React Server component. I hope that already clarifies a bit about use server and use client and what the difference of these directives means to your components. Um, I also talked to Evan and I want to just clarify because I was kind of confused. There's a paragraph here about server components and there's a paragraph about client components and server functions. So um, let me quote this server functions are the functions exported from the file marked with use server. So this is our server function. A server components are what we call React components rendered in that environment and they render in a special bundle on the server called the React server environment. And RSC is the special protocol that makes JSX serializable. serializable? Yeah, serial, that's probably how you pronounce it. So basically meaning how you get this stuff over the wire transferred into your React Native application. Now you might say, Simon, well, this is not really impressive. You could also do all of this on the client. And I agree, this is just one example. So let me show you another one. If we go to my functions page, um, I might want to interact with OpenAI. So therefore I might have to install the OpenAI package. I think I forgot about that one. And I will bring in a new folder called actions. So as we learned, these are server actions. So I want to probably uh, name them accordingly. This is an action I wrote. It is using use server, uh, in server only, making sure it only runs on the server. Therefore, it will read from my environment, my open AI key. I have a little lock here to uh, run only on the server. And then we do the usual open AI stuff to get a completion uh, for say hello to name. And then we return a box with a bit of styling and the content streamed back from OpenAI. Now, this can be super easily integrated. If I go to my functions page, uh, and we got my button here. So in my button, I would know in the action, do something like, and now it gets, I, I know you're gonna hate me for this, <laughs> use server. And I've seen all the memes like with PHP and what they did. Um, so let's call console lock. Uh, button pressed server only. Um, and this could run now simply only on the server. I know this is going to get me probably into React Native hell, but this is what's possible now. On top of that, I want to use my cool function again. So uh, just like before, I'm going to wrap it with suspense, which makes sure we display an activity indicator or anything you want, any kind of component until we get the result from my get completion action. So here I'm importing get completion from my actions and I pass the name Simon. With that in place, let's boot up the server again, npx expo. Um, let's do a little reload here. And then we see our RSC and now let's go to open functions. We see another loading spinner and hello Simon, how are you doing today? Well, I hope you can understand what's now going on in the background. Um, because right here we see the lock. I can actually open the new dev tools and you won't see that lock in here. So this is just the default lock. There's no lock in here, but only here, which means the function we just called my get completion definitely only runs in the server side environment. And therefore we can use secret keys 
API keys, information that should not be part of the bundle of our application. And going back to the functions, once again, uh, I should be able to, let's put this in a smaller window up here. I'm gonna press this. Uh, oh, button pressed server only. This is definitely something that shouldn't happen, I assume. Uh, because if we have use server in my button here, I don't feel like this should be locked out here. But again, we're very early to this. So eventually, uh, I'm pretty sure I made a mistake here uh, because before it looked correctly. Also, this package really for all, uh, all the anxious people amongst us, this will make sure that the stuff only runs on the server. So we've now already seen server actions with our list returning some beautiful components. Um, I can open a function. Uh, I can use secret keys in a safe place in there. Now let's take the final step, which is DOM components, which is another masterpiece in how you can in the future build out your React Native applications. Right now, if I click on one of these things, it uses my link item to go to this page where we extract the ID and I currently probably render it somewhere here. Yeah, it's in black, you can't really see this. Maybe another team in my company has already worked on this details page and they created such a beautiful web page that can't we just use that web page? And yes, of course we can. That is the cool thing about DOM components. So let's add a third one. I will make a new folder. I'm gonna call this one DOM. And in my DOM component, I will drop in my details page. Okay, this is now using the use DOM directive, which allows us to simply return HTML in my React Native application. We have some bit of styling here. I just generated this with cursor and said, hey, please create a view. And this is just loading based on an ID the film, yeah, I know, I should use 10 stack query for that, but I really want, just wanted to make an easy example, sorry. I'm fetching the data, I'm setting the data, something that you actually can't do with server components, so you can't have use state in your server components, but no problem here with my DOM component. And I can now also in here simply use CSS. So if my team already has a specific CSS file like this for all the cool stuff, I am done. I'm done with that page and I can now drop this into my application because of use DOM up here. So I can now just go back to my details page and in here I'll just say, okay, please just render the details page here. Uh, we're going to use the ID that was passed with Expo Router to this page, um, making sure that this is a number and not a string. And let's hit save. And let's see, we might have to do a little Refresh here, uh, dump components, production export may not work. Yeah, I'm okay with that. And voila, our completely styled page is integrated and is fully integrated into my React Native app experience. Now, uh, we can do a bunch more here with DOM components. This is really like just dropping in the HTML and rendering it is only the beginning. We could now easily pass more information to this page. So if you want to like add a star functionality or other links in here, we could include uh, the native functionality here as sort of like callbacks and therefore spice up the web code that was given to us in like the transition to React Native. And also if we would now integrate a link component from Expo Router in here, as far as I know, this should by now work. Um, can I just like display, can I say cursor this one last final try, um, include a list of links to the other movies. Let's see if this is actually possible. Okay, this is my details. Yeah, JSX expressions need to have one. I know about that. So right now we would have these links that definitely don't work. But if I would now say that this is actually an Expo Router link component, uh, I don't really want like text decoration and crazy stuff right now. I just want to see if this works. Let's see, I go here um, and I click here. Oh my, it actually works. This works, <laughs> this is so crazy. So now we've extended our DOM component, which was just dropped in web code with functionality that works in the native stack navigation of our application. Um, this is really, uh, I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of speechless at some point because uh, some people say, yeah, this is not right. Like I want, in, I want to use this in the future, but 
this opens up a lot of possibilities. So from server components like this to server actions that actually use secret keys and environments or directly uh, use server in your React Native components. And then finally uh, with use DOM, DOM components uh, that have CSS in your React Native app and behave almost like a native app. The potential of React Native applications in the future to me is kind of limitless. All right, I hope you enjoyed this first glimpse at RSC and how they could enhance your React Native apps. Keep in mind that production exports for React Server components on native are not yet supported. This is planned for Expo SDK 53, and I'm pretty sure Expo will then also present an option for hosting all of this. And also, if you encounter problems, this is normal. It's bleeding edge stuff, so expect it to get rough. But honestly, playing around with DOM components and RSC feels like a glimpse of what's possible in the future of React Native. More than ever, I'm super excited about it. But what about you? How do you feel about RSC and DOM components? Let me know in the comments if you would like to see more about it in a realistic example. And of course, check out galaxies.dev if you want more fast-paced courses, practical projects, and personal support. And if you want to dive more into DOM components already, check out my video up here. They will make your web to native transition unbelievable easy. And I will catch you in the next one. So until then, happy coding. Silence.